guys, David O'Brien, Fifth Element Wellness, and I'm here with one of our um, key members, yeah, yeah. Peggy. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let Peggy talk about her story today. Um, but before I get into some of the issues that Peggy had, do you just want to tell people how you were feeling prior and also a little bit of what you'd tried as well to fix some of your problems? Okay. Well, it's, I've always had gut issues my whole life, unfortunately. I think it's from a lot of antibiotic use and chronic infections, etc. Um, I tried everything. Um, and I think I started a job that I didn't realize how stressful it was, and um, my gut progressively got worse. Um, and by this stage, I'd, been, I'd gone to a naturopath, I'd been to my GP, back to my GP, back to the naturopath, trying all different types of things. Mm. Uh, eventually, I got referred to a gastroenterologist. Uh, we did some stool testing. It came out that I had blastocystis. So I thought, this is why, you know, I probably caught it in Bali five years ago, so I've had these five years of these gut problems. Um, so, you know, $1,000 worth of antibiotics, um, didn't work the first time, had to do it again, and he put me on a very low FODMAP diet trying to rebuild the gut microbiome. And I was okay for a little bit, um, but then it just didn't get any better. Yeah. Um, but I thought, you know, it's just the progress, it's going to just take a bit of time. And it, look, I've always been a dedicated gym follower, um, and in my gym routine included four spin classes, two boxing, you know, hit, hit sessions or, you know, circuit classes. I used to just slam myself five days a week, mm. and I thought it had to happen 6 a.m. I ate the same foods every day. I, you know, and but I used to drink um, as a reward on the weekends and kind of have a bit of a blowout. Yeah. Um, and then, but I was pretty strict, but I ate the same foods all the time. Yeah. Now, progressively, I noticed um, I just couldn't have that, I just couldn't work out as hard as I could. It just started to slow, and I thought, it's my age and my energy. Everybody complains about getting tired when you're over 40, 45, life's hard. My energy is getting worse, my workouts are getting worse, I'm just starting to creep a bit of weight on, so I start doing fasting, you know, fasting's all the rage, yep. increase my coffees, <laughs> um, and then I went through a significant stressful event at work, unfortunately, and I think when I took uh, some time off, I thought, yeah, I'm just going to hit the gym and get this all right, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to... And I would put my Lycra on, I couldn't get to the gym. I was just progressively worse, so it went from two doubles to three doubles of coffee. And then I would reduce my food even more, thinking I'm going to lose weight. And I would restrict more and more. And at this time, my stomach is just a disaster. It's yeah. gassy, it's bloating, it's just... I cut out every you name of the food, I've cut it out. Onions, garlic... Um, I'm basically down to kale and salmon and not yep. very much um, Yeah, so your, your food window was just getting smaller and yeah. smaller yeah. and because of a lot of the inflammatory sort of responses oh, that were yeah. going on in your body yeah. that was restricting your range of movement you've had yeah. like massive problems with your knees Oh, well that was it I couldn't uh, the only thing I could do was do spinning because um, my knees were so bad I couldn't run um, had a couple of ACA repairs I was told I had no cartilage in my knees so mm. not to do any anything I couldn't squat couldn't and just going up and down stairs pain pain in my joints um, I had really bad asthma my asthma was actually getting worse I had to increase my puffers I went back to you know I got some nasty chest infections fractured my coccyx uh, and then ended up in surgery now this is sort of you know prior to this, so three months of getting worse and worse and just need to sleep um, but really bad insomnia um, moody, <laughs> you know, really flat actually. Your body was like Mr. Glass, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. pretty much. So then, um, I, I, I see this as the lowest point, but I see it as a lucky, this is the luckiest thing that could have happened to me because it led me here. In a short Thank story, you. I ended up, um, I ended up in hospital and I had a, they I'd aspirated during surgery. So I woke up unable to breathe and in hospital, um, which was supposed to be a day procedure to fix my coccyx, I was there for a week and on huge amounts of steroids. So I left that, uh, I left the hospital just a broken woman, just unable to walk with really bad vertigo, um, just a mess, really flat, anxious, depressed, the whole thing. And um, one of my friends said, you gotta go and see Dave. 
And so that's and here she is. So yeah. I made the appointment, and at that point, I realised, you know, uh, um, it, I was a bit of a mess, and I was a bit reluctant. I was worried about the cost. I was like, I can't afford it. I can't. Oh, I can't afford a six hundred dollars stool test. I can't. I because I've been warned about what it was all about. So I, mm. yeah. Um, so I was. I started, and Dave just said to me, "You can't exercise." And I thought, "What? Like." Anyway, you can explain why. <laughs> yeah, look, it's not a case that Peggy couldn't exercise. Like, she, we definitely got her moving and walking. actually, yeah, a lot, lot, lot of walking. We put a little bit more focus on, like, things like calisthenics and, um, like, body weight training and uh, strengthening up the posterior chain and yeah. a lot of things like posterior sled walks and all that sort of stuff. And the key thing was, like, you know, Look, Peggy is a completely different woman to the woman oh, that yeah. first work, walked in my office. Yeah. And she, look, she did have serious digestive complications that end up that secretory IgA levels, which we tested through her stool, were hardly anything, which means that actually been worn down because that's like a sticky substance that helps to trap in like pathogens and bad bacteria. It's basically our immunology. So it actually is our body's natural vaccination and her levels were chronically low, which mm -hmm. basically means she just worn down the gut lining. Yeah. Okay, so we definitely, I definitely knew that I had to fix the gut lining. That had encouraged opportunities opportunistic bacteria, a particular negative gram bacteria called Klebsiella oxytoca, okay, and that is also linked to, actually linked to autoimmune conditions, but linked to inflammatory conditions, yeah. especially of the joints and so forth, but it's also linked to, you know, congestion, like oh, yeah. sinusitis, and even problems with focus and concentration, and also the uh, high amounts of LPS that are getting um, released into the system can cause some massive issues with glutathione pools and so detoxification is affected as well so do you want to talk to people about My before and after oh uh, yes yeah, so basically just well, like uh, I guess more like yes going through the process but mainly like how you feel now because for me the transformation is is ridiculous oh look I, I'm a bit evangelical about it actually Dave so it's pretty <laughs> exciting I, I didn't realize the power of food and changing my routine could have on me. I had no idea. So I had, I used to, my nose used to just drip constantly and I was on, my, I would be wheezy all the time. Uh, I was on, you know, preventers and inhalers every day. Um, that has completely stopped. I have absolutely zero asthma at all and that's been about eight months. And that's through the so-called, you know, um, pollen season, because I was told that I had a pollen reaction when mm. I came to Australia. Yeah. And my joint pain was through the roof. I couldn't actually bend or squat. And um, I actually squatted 50 kilos and I actually cried because that was probably the first time in over 10 years. And my, my knees are, and I have no knee pain, none, zero. Like it's, it's a little bit there in the joints, you know, but not when I'm walking at all my ankles better. Um, I think, you know, I didn't realize I was actually chronically freezing. I used to, my husband used to say, you're, why are you so cold? I was always freezing. And now I actually am hot, you know, so circulation, circulation is better, better vasodilation, yeah, which had, means it's going to be better also for weight loss. The yeah. thing I want to say with Peggy, she's also lost, I can't remember the exact 10, amount. 10% body yeah, fat. Yeah, about 10% body fat. She's dropped weight. She's got more lean muscle. So, yeah. um, you know, by focusing on what's going on in the gut and so forth, it's had a knock-on effect to mm. her body composition and her self-confidence. and Definitely. Like, yeah. My mood is really steady and my energy levels are actually steady all day. So, I mean, it did require for me to give up caffeine and we'll talk about that. <laughs> so, caffeine and alcohol. But, um, the, just the no energy slump and the cognition is back and I feel you know I used to just get what am I doing I'd stare at the computer going what have I just sat down to do and I would forget and you know I was teaching and I couldn't remember kids names or what I, I, I just had to go it was it was a bit of a disaster really and now I feel like I'm just on top of my game and when all my friends are complaining about being tired and you know this is terrible going menopause is often all this kind of stuff and I feel actually like this is the best part of my life. I've never felt better in my life, mm. you know, in my adult life, really. And it, it is amazing. The transformation in Peggy is unbelievable. And I might get Peggy back in again <laughs> to talk about that process that she went through. But, yeah. um, you know, like Peggy's a great example, uh, for I think, for anyone of someone who takes a bit of a leap of faith 
Mm. Okay, um, the process wasn't easy, and there's many times that me and Peggy <laughs> d- discussed in, in in depth the process, and but she trusted it. She kept she kept on going with it. And as I said, like Peggy is a breath of fresh air every time she walks into the facility. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. All right. So, (laughs) (laughs) thanks guys for listening. And yeah, we'll speak to you soon. (laughs) Thanks, Peggy. Thanks, Dave. Yeah.